So taking a closer look at our hub, we've got three channels, one, two, and three. So in the channel number one and two, we're gonna be able to use a single cable coming from our AIO and a single cable coming from the case fans we're gonna install in our power supply throughout. And that one cable, we're gonna be able to control both the lighting effects on the fans as well as their speed. Channel three is slightly different and it offers legacy support. So we've got a four pin PWM connector and also a JST connector, which is exactly the cables we've got coming from our four pre-installed case fans. So we're gonna be able to plug the cables into here to control not only their speed, but also their ARGB effects. We're gonna to have to power the hub and we've got a six pin PCIe connector on the bottom. So we plug a cable coming from our power supply into it, it's gonna power it. And we're also gonna to need to connect it up to our motherboard and there's two different options for doing this. The first is USB. So we can plug in the included USB cable. The other end of the cable we're going to plug into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard and we're going to be able to use then Fantex's Nextlink software to control the speed and ARGB effects on the fans. So it is possible to use the hub without software and on the other end we've got this cable. So we can plug it into the cable that comes with the hub and then the other end we've got a PWM and ARGB cable and if we plug this into our motherboard we're going to be able to use our motherboard software to control the hub so we're not actually going to need to use any software. So it is nice the options you have. We can use this USB cable and Fantex's software to control the fans. Alternatively we can use the cable on this side to use our motherboard software to control the lighting and speed of the fans and if you don't actually use either of these the hub will still work but the fans will run at 100% in terms of their speed and it will default to rainbow settings. So not an option you're gonna to want to use. You're gonna to want to either use the USB or the PWM and ARGB connector. Okay, so I'm gonna take the JST connector coming from our fans and plug it into port number three and also our PWM cable and plug it into port number three. And one nice thing about this hub is it is magnetic. So we can just set it here on the case. We've got two USB 2.0 headers down the bottom of the motherboard, so I'm gonna bring the USB cable coming from our hub through, and we're gonna plug it in with the USB text facing up the way. So completely optional, but I am gonna plug the PWM cable and the ARGB cable coming from our hub into the motherboard to allow me the option of using motherboard control. So we've got a system fan header at the top of the motherboard. We can bring the cable through and get it plugged into our first system fan header. And we've also got an ARGB header at the top of the motherboard, so we'll bring the ARGB cable through and get it plugged in. And then lastly, we just need to power our hub, so we'll plug a six pin PCIe cable into the hub. Then at the back of the case, we can join the cable coming from our fans and the radiator into the cable coming from our pump. And then we're just gonna plug this into port number one on our hub. And last thing to do is plug the bottom fans into port number two on our hub. To download your software, you're gonna head over to the Fantex page and download their Nextlink software. I'm recording this before the product releases. This is why there's nothing on this page at the moment. But by the time you're seeing it, you're just gonna to come to the link in the description and you'll be able to download the software from here. Once you've downloaded it, you're gonna head over to your downloads folder and click on the file, click yes, and click next, next, and install. And then click on finish. Okay, so this is what our software looks like. We can see the fans plugged into ports one, two, and three. Now remember, port one is our I.O., port two is the fans at the bottom of the case, and port three is the pre-installed case fans. We can see the speed each of these fans are running at, and we've got our CPU temperature and GPU. For some reason, the CPU temperature doesn't come up. And in terms of what we can control, we've got fan control and lighting control. So in fan control, port one, so that's our AIO, it's working off our CPU temperature, which is the way we want it, and it's running on the silent fan curve. Now importantly, this isn't our pump, this is just the fans on the radiator. Um, port two, which is the fans at the bottom of the case, they're working off CPU temperature, so it probably does make sense to have these working off GPU temperature. So I'm gonna swap that over. Happy to keep them running on the silent fan curve, and our pre-installed case fans, I'm gonna keep them working off the CPU temperature on the silent curb. We can, if we want to increase things, click on the performance curve, and that is gonna bump things up. And we just need to click on the send to hub. And what you'll see now is our fans in port three, which is the ones we increased performance, have increased up to 60%. And if we want, we can make our own custom fan curves where we're able to drag the points on the curve to where we want it to. And again, when we're done, just click send to hub and you'll notice there's a reduction in our fan speeds. They're now running on the custom curves. But for now, I think until I've done the thermal testing, I'm just gonna leave them running on the standard curves. So next we can head over to our lighting control. So at the moment, port one, which is our IO, it's running off the Fantex software. 
if we want, we can run it off our motherboard's header. So I'll click on that, and that's going to allow our motherboard to control the lighting. Or we can also use Windows Dynamic Lighting. I'm going to stick with the Fantex software, and we can just change it over to what we want. We're on Rainbow, and we've got different patterns for Rainbow. We're going to go with a solid color, a solid red. We can do that. And before we're going to see this change, we need to send to the hub. So you'll see now the lighting on our pump and also the fans at the top have changed to red. I've always been a fan of the two-tone color changes, so let's go for it. I'm happy with color one being red, and let's go with red and blue. And we'll send that to the hub. So I want to set up the rest of the fans up the same way. I just need to click on same as port one, same as port one, and then send this to the hub. And you'll notice that all our fans have changed the lighting to red and blue.